dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs osteo med a series of uh, video lectures on osteology hosted on youtube channel vbs osteo med the topic for today's discussion is a continuation of the previous two topics let's call it the treasure box or what we mean is the interior of the cranial cavity in part 3 of this discussion let's take an overview of the posterior cranial floor or the posterior cranial fossa we will first examine a dry skull thereafter we will examine uh, yeah, a cadaver from which the calvaria is removed and the brain is removed and the floor of the cranial cavity is visible with the dura intact and all the mm, structures in the floor intact now let's take this uh, a look at this photograph we have seen this in the previous two videos but then concentrate on uh, um this uh, flashing arrows and in those two videos we had already described that the floor of the cranial cavity can be divided into three regions an anterior frontal a middle sphenotemporal and a posterior occipital continuing the same classification let us now concentrate on the area marked by the square and that is the posterior cranial fossa since we are looking at the floor we could as well call this as the posterior cranial floor let's see the key uh, features uh, that we can see in the osteology of the this area now i have highlighted three part three points three features or three key items the dotted circle blue white dotted circle is the huge foramen magnum some amount of discussion we have had about this in the previous videos but this is the, uh, the very key structure of this area a key item of this area we have already seen that several structures pass through it particularly the medullospinal continuation the dural Uh, the, the meningeal coverings the vertebral vessels to name the important few you can also see a flashing arrow uh, that's the upper border or the superior border of the pitreous part of the temporal bone in life it holds uh, the superior petrosal sinus between the two uh, dural Uh, flaps next there is another arrow which is not uh, flashing a static arrow we, i have called that uh, sloped area as the basi occiput that surface the sloping surface is the clivus and the bones that uh, contribute to this basi occiput is one the basilar part of the occipital bone and in front at the posterior most part of the body of the sphenoid that that area is shown here and that's the area where the anterior surface of the brain stem is in immediate uh, contact Next, we can also see on the posterior surface of the pitreous temporal yeah foramen which is pointed out by a pointing straight arrow that's the internal acoustic meatus through which the facial and the vestibulo cochlear nerve will uh, exit out of the cranial cavity also seen in this uh, photograph you can see the sigmoid sinus in s shaped uh, sinus a blood sinus basically it is a continuation of the transverse sinus that sinus is shown um, by a straight arrow non flashing straight arrow when you trace it down you can actually trace it to the jugular foramen and the foramen itself is shown by a curved arrow on the other side therefore 
This photograph highlights internal acoustic meatus, sigmoid sinus, and the jugular foramen. Next, a suture between the basilar part of the occipital bone and the pitreous part of the temporal bone can be seen very clearly. And that's the flashing arrow, straight arrow. Below it, not flashing, but very clearly seen right above the foramen magnum is the hypoglossal canal through which the hypoglossal nerve exits out of the cranial cavity. Now, we, have, we have changed the skull. I have, I have taken two or three different skulls so that in each something or the other is better highlighted. Hence, we have uh, I have brought in this skull. Here, the flashing arrow marks an important junction of a few ridges. The junctional point is the internal occipital protuberance. It, the corresponding thing on the outer side we have seen in uh, Norma uh, occipitalis, that is the exterior of the skull, and we have called it as the uh, external occipital protuberance. Right inside, uh, the corresponding projection or the junction is the internal occipital protuberance. From the, this area, you can see on either side, the right and the left, transverse sinus impressions, impressions for the transverse sinus. Next, in the next slide, you will see that all the sinuses are meeting at the internal occipital protuberance. The protuberance is a point, but the area where all the sinuses meet is a confluence, and that's shown by uh, a, the dotted circle that's called the confluence of sinuses. Not only the two transverse sinuses, right and left, but also the superior and the inferior sagittal sinuses join this confluence of sinuses. Now you see, this is a, a yet another skull. The orientation of the skull is different from all that I showed you before. The posterior cranial fossa in this skull is uh, in the upper uh, right corner. You can see the foramen magnum as a central circular or oval area. Marked in dotted, uh, dotted uh, circle, you, once again, is the confluence of sinuses. At this confluence of sinuses, you can see the transverse sinuses of either sides joining the superior sagittal sinus above and the inferior sagittal. I mean, these are the impressions of these sinuses on the dry bone. You see, it's like four roads meeting at a uh, particular uh, spot. It's more or less a something similar. Uh, that's an important junction. This is only by an example to show uh, that this is an important junction. Now, as I told you, let's see some specimen where the dura is intact. Some of the cranial nerves in the floor is intact after the brain has been removed. Once again, you can see the dotted circle is the foramen magnum. The flashing arrow is two nerves, facial and vestibulocochlear nerves. At this level of clarity, which is which we cannot make out. Next, you can also see the medullospinal junction and uh, a little more on the lateral side, the same dotted circle has been reduced in size and moved us to the side. That area that it encircles is the internal acoustic meatus. Internal. Earlier in the previous photograph, we saw the facial and the vestibular cochlea. They go through this foramen. They exit out of the cranial cavity. Next. In the slope, very close to the clivus, you can see the abducens nerve. And at the level of the foramen magnum, we can also see right in front of the spinomedullary junction, the vertebral arteries. Next, also seen immediately lateral to the foramen magnum, the jugular foramen. It is not very clear, but that's the yeah, that's the spot where the foramen is located.
to some extent let's try to appreciate these in some of these cross sections either in specimens or through uh, mri uh, ct scans now here is an mri of the skull base although so many structures are there we have seen some of these in the middle and the anterior cranial fossa so we will avoid uh, going back on them but very clearly seen here without any uh, any uh, doubts is the midbrain and the cerebellum shown by the two flashing arrows the upper curved flashing arrow is the midbrain the lower straight obliquely oriented flashing arrow is the cerebellum that means some part of the cerebellum is immediately visible and between the two we are at the upper end of the fourth ventricle so you can see the uh, small gap there that's the upper end of the fourth ventricle more posteriorly behind the cerebellum at this level of cross section the tip of the occipital uh, cortex is also visible now i have moved the mri skull base to the side and try to bring in at least a near match cross section of an actual specimen and try to see how much these two uh, can correlate with each other it may not be the perfect uh, you know match section but then it's very very close to it now for example you can see on the mri skull base i have removed the labels but the same four items i have labeled on the uh, actual specimen now you can see the midbrain you can see the upper end of the fourth ventricle by a small gap you can see the occipital lobe you can also see a small part of the cerebellum immediately behind the uh, midbrain this is yet another mri skull base a little lower level because the anterior edge of the foramen magnum is beginning to show at this level it's the medulla oblongata or probably the medullospinary junction the cerebellum not much of details is available but it is the whole area behind that uh, whole area behind the medulla is the cerebellum and immediately lateral to the ridge or uh, that arch of bone which uh, uh, surrounds the jugular foramen you can see which surrounds the foramen magnum we can see another foramen namely the jugular foramen that means that bony arch separates the two foramina separates the foramen magnum and the foramen jugular foramen i have also labeled it as jugular fossa bar foramen because at this level of the cross section uh, it's difficult to specifically say where the foramen ends and the fossa begins now you see corresponding to this mri skull base i have tried to map a uh, actual cross section specimen once again it's a near match not perfect but certain things are better seen in this for example the ponto medullary junction is seen you can see the 7th bar 8th cranial nerves entering the internal acoustic meatus and more posteriorly the cerebellum is visible now this is a solo it doesn't have a corresponding mri of the skull base but this is uh, a very interesting cross section uh, it's probably at a much lower level the spino medullary junction can be seen because the cross section has more spinal characteristics rather than medullary characteristics on either sides you can see uh, patches of the occipital bone large patches of the occipital in particular the squamous occipital fills the area entirely behind it in small windows you can see bits of cerebellum and more laterally you can see a small part of sectioned mastoid process is a very interesting cross section where you have a few additional points of the posterior cranial floor is identifiable now that was a brief overview of the posterior cranial floor i am sure you will have some points for feedback i would appreciate if you could send me your feedback to this email email id or
better still you could post it on the blog that is available immediately below the uh, video on my youtube channel that was a presentation from the anatomy department st john's medical college bangalore also to mention that a full set of histology videos are available in this channel vbs histomed on uh, youtube the full set about 90 plus videos are available it is very very useful for students belonging to medical dental nursing physiotherapy and allied health courses across the globe i would if you like it i would suggest you subscribe to this channel subscription is absolutely free and also press the bell button so that you will be informed or notified as and when additional information is added uh, into the uh, channel thank you for your patient hearing